is Larry Wheels. Inhuman strength, elite muscle mass, and this for some reason. Larry would at 18 bench 535 pounds for 2, squat 675 pounds for 3, and at 19 deadlift 700 pounds for 3. There comes a question about how this is all possible. How is it possible for a human being to be that strong this young? This is a picture of Larry Wheels at 17 years old. You wouldn't ever meet a teenager who's that big in your high school class and only see this online. But Larry is far from being the only. Eddie Hall, mostly famous for his deadlift world record, looked like this at 16. Four times Mr. Olympia champion Chris Bumstead looked like this at 18, and Lee Priest looked like this at 17. Those genetic phenoms who made it to the world stage weren't exactly a surprise. Looking at their physiques early on, it could be expected from them to go very far. But this isn't always the case. Kaylor Wulam, at only 16, that lifted 445 pounds at a weight of only 132. Gotta move my... I mean, I guess he's telling you weight, so I don't know about that. Really gotta move it, but gotta move it. Two pounds, looking like this. With no intention to body shame him, no one would expect a teenager of his size to deadlift such a phenomenal weight. If you had to compare Larry's size to his size despite having a similar deadlift at the same age, you wouldn't expect Gaylor to be as strong as Larry. And this is the power of genetics. More size doesn't necessarily mean a stronger body, even though there's a correlation between both. Kaylor probably beat all of his bigger classmates in a deadlift competition at 16. So how come someone like Kaylor was able to keep up with the genetic freak that is Larry, despite being much smaller? Well, this is the question I tried to answer. We've all seen them before. They barely start lifting and put on mass like nothing, while you began three years ago to end up looking worse than them after six months. Genetics don't merely play a role in the muscle building process, they actually play a pretty critical, pretty important role. Probably more of a role than most fitness coaches would ultimately want to admit. At 12 he wasn't even training and he's doing the bicep shot and he's got some jacked arms. No training whatsoever. He started doing a couple curls, maybe a one or two side laterals for a couple weeks and boom! Muscles are growing. Genetics can be very frustrating, largely since you have zero control over them. Some start off stronger than others, some start off bigger. Some got lucky, others did not. Some of us are also naturally predisposed to building muscle at faster rates. It would be naive to assume that we're all born on a 100% equal playing field when it comes to building overall muscle size and strength. It's just not the case. The point is, we all have different genetics and there's many factors to determine if someone has good genetics or not. So, let's look at a couple of them. People either have fast twitch muscle fibers or slow twitch muscle fibers. Having more of the former allows someone to be generally better at strength and power training, while being better at putting on more muscle. Having more of the latter, on the other hand, is much less advantageous for putting on muscle, but much better for long distance training and endurance sports. If you have mostly fast twitch muscle fibers, you're much more likely to be able to add more muscle versus slow twitch, you're more likely to be good at endurance events. It is said that as your absolute strength increases, your relative strength decreases. Absolute strength is the maximum amount of weight someone can lift, regardless of how much they weigh. Relative strength is the total amount of weight your body can lift relative to your body weight. This usually is calculated by taking someone's max divided by their body weight. Larry was able to deadlift 700 at 19, while being significantly bigger than Kaylor at 16 who deadlifted 445 pounds. Larry in this case has better absolute strength, but Kaylor has much more relative strength of 3.37 times his body weight, meaning that if Kaylor was able to put on Larry's mass, he would be significantly stronger than him and this somewhat happened. Because after years of training and more muscle build, Kaylor was able to deadlift 950 pounds, breaking the world record for his weight class. People with higher relative strength will generally be better at strength and power training, while people with less relative strength will be better suited for bodybuilding style training because of their higher volume tolerance. Muscle bellies too play a big role in your appearance. The most common example is looking at long bicep tendons versus short ones. You can see that the one on the left looks better and fuller than the one on the right. Another example is lat insertions. Again, the one on the left looks fuller and more impressive than the one on the right. Every muscle in the body is going to look different depending on how it's attached. So if you have... So I got a longer, short head uh, uh, bicep tendon. I think I got a shorter. Because the other guy, he... 
Yeah, I guess it's kind of long. This shit was all. This shit was peak. I'm like, goddamn. Great, full-looking muscle bellies. Yeah. You are gonna be able to look a lot better when you add muscle. Abs insertions have this too. Although there's a size difference, the left one looks significantly better than the right one, leading to my next point. Not only insertions play a role, but fat distribution too. Going back to the abs, the one on the left carries less body fat in its midsection than the right one. Here's an example of Brett Mossing. He is estimated to have 15% body fat in this picture, while still maintaining a full six pack. The reason behind this is because he tends to carry more fat in his legs and back, leading to his visible six pack even at a higher body fat percentage. Muscle moment arms also play a role in an individual's strength. Muscles are attached to bones with the help of tendons. The distance that exists between the place where the tendon attaches and the center of the joint is called the moment arm and works in a similar way as a wrench. The longer it is, the more force you're able to put out. Just like you're able to put out more force with a longer moment arm. Yet, this isn't the biggest strength component. Anthropometry is likely the most important component for strength. This is the science that defines physical measures of a person's size, form and functional capacities. Let's look at the bench press. The ideal proportions would be to have short arms, which could partly explain why Tristan Lee or Greg Doucet have such an impressive bench press. On the other hand, for a deadlift, it is more optimal to have longer arms, a shorter torso and shorter legs, as it reduces the distance you have to travel. In powerlifting, if you have real and shorter legs, as it, it reduces the distance you have to travel. Where's his knees at? That's not real. No, that's a, what? The people got, well, there's no way people actually have proportions like this, bro. Why is the arms, like, almost twice his torso, bro? What the heck? If dude just stands upright, he can touch his shins, bro. Not even, like, he, go, he goes past his knees, he can touch his shins. Like, literally, he can itch his shins without bending. In powerlifting, if you have really long arms, probably going to be a good deadlifter, but bad on the bench press and vice versa. Also, if you have a short torso, short legs, probably be a lot better at deadlifting than if you're six foot ten and have a greater range of motion on the bench press, deadlift, or squat. In the case of bodybuilding, having larger clavicles and a smaller waist will make a significant difference. Having more narrow clavicles will look less impressive regardless of how much muscle you put on. If you have really wide clavicles and small hips, there's a greater chance you're going to be better at bodybuilding than if you have narrow shoulders and wide Wide hips you might be able to build just as much muscle but it won't look as aesthetically pleasing and your body reacts a certain way to training stimuli and peds some people tend to put on muscle very fast in the first years which then slows down after and others put on muscle more consistently over the years some seem to simply look at a weight and make more progress than someone else Me. <laughs> as for peds some people barely imp Improve with low doses, but blow up with slightly higher doses. And others have enough with very low doses, but don't seem to make more progress with higher doses. Some people respond much more favorably when they take PDs. You take two people, they give them the same cycle. One gains 10 pounds, the other only five. Why? Because one person responds better to the PDs they were given. Those are simply a fraction of the genetic components that play a role in strength and size, and it would be impossible to list them all. Others include mental strength, which has a genetic component. Certain people are born able to push harder than others. The ability to withstand injury. If you're in the gym training, you're tearing your pec, your biceps, you're not going to be... Thank, thank goodness, I've never torn anything. Knock on wood, real quick. I did break my, my middle finger once. In high, in high school, cause, but it, it wasn't even because I was lifting. Bro. I mean, I was in the gym. So you, you can call it a, a, a lifting injury, bro. But this dude dropped 45 pounds of not like the plastic weight, but like the steel, real steel weight, bro, on my finger, bro. This shit snapped. My finger, it was, it was like this. I mean, you can still kind of see it. It bends a little. Yeah, you can, it goes a little. It goes straight here, then bends a little bit this way. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't wear my cast because I don't know why I didn't wear my cast, but... Now my, now my fingers, my middle finger is kind of forever just pointing to the right or to the left, right for you, the rest of me. You know what I'm saying? But that's the only, thank God, that's the only injury I've ever really had lifting wise, you know what I'm saying? Um, besides, you know, like the aches, you know what I'm saying? My, just like getting old type shit.
able to get very big. While on the other hand, somebody like Brad Casablary can train with really heavy weights with poor form and never seems to get injured. If you're one of those people, there's a greater chance you're going to be able to build more muscle. Muscle cell size, number and satellite cells, which are responsible for the ability of muscle tissue to regenerate, hormone levels, recovery speed and body types. You could try to understand every single genetic component, but that wouldn't be a good idea. It's easy for someone to blame their bad genetics and quit because of it, without realizing that most people have decent genetics, with which they can achieve great results with years of consistent and optimized training. Yeah. Only a very small percentage have either terrible genetics or excellent genetics. But all that gets shown are the excellent genetics, and it's easy to start comparing no, to that very small Like, <laughs> did they start working out because did they start working out because they look good? Because you know, because they're big? Or what, did it get big because, I don't know, I guess either way they're big at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? But, but the real question is, did they start posting workout content because because they wanted, uh, because they were big or because did they post out content because, you know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm trying to say because you are an intellectual like me. Percentage of people. Looking at the distribution curve, most people find themselves here, in the average category. Yet, what you're shown are the people who always belong to this category, the Elite. But I was gonna say the, the elite post because the elite, you know what I'm saying, bro? If why did my mic go down? Was my mic down the whole time? I'm about Regardless to watch how this bad video. you consider your genetics to be, it's always possible to improve yourself and make your genetics appear better than they actually are. By optimizing the work you put in with diet, training, and overall lifestyle over the decades, it's very much possible to move up two categories like Greg Doucette claims. No matter where your genetics fall, no matter how horrendously awful they are, you can still improve. But the difference is, you can only improve by so much. And so if you have the worst of the worst genetics, you can improve by two categories. And so no matter where your genetics fall, you can improve by two genetic categories. Anybody out there who has at least somewhere around average genetics, Genetics, give or take, okay, with the proper program in place and enough hard work and consistency over the long term, they can still achieve what would be considered to be an impressive physique. So don't let this discourage you. No matter what, focusing on bad genetics is never a good way to approach it. In Stoicism, it is said to focus on the part of life you can control and avoid those you cannot control, which Have is very she? true here. Focus on building good habits, eat well, train hard, and avoid obsessing over the quality of your genetics, since you have zero control over Why everyone's bigger than you? I was like, why is, what is this video? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense, you know what I'm saying? But like, he didn't tell you anything you didn't know already, you feel me, broski? For this video to have damn near 300,000 views, he just said some basic knowledge stuff, and then he told you you could just 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 work hard <laughs> well, you know what i'm saying